What's up guys, my name is Dan Chronic, you're also here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be showing you all the new exotics coming to the Warmind DLC, or perhaps most of them, perhaps they're hiding a few of them in the unique rewards of the Nightfall, of the Raid, we'll have to wait and see exactly what are the new ones, but these are all the release, the currently released uh, new exotics, they released right after the uh, Bungie stream that happened just on April 24th, if you're watching it today, howdy, I just watched that, and I just got a whole bunch of images from, uh, from Activision being like, yo, look at all the new stuff there's a whole bunch of other pictures of the new uh, siva looking armor uh it's probably the you know the mars faction token looking armor thing uh there's a bunch of images of the new strike of the new strike boss he looks cool uh there's a bunch of images of story of anna bray let me know if you want to see more videos about those things but in this video we're gonna be talking about all the exotics we just have pictures they don't tell us what they do i'm gonna try to speculate on what they do do based on the fact if they're from destiny one or if they're a new one and their motto and stuff and all the hints if you do end up liking the video, make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe for more Destiny 2 in the future. I love Destiny 2. I'm a guy who's into Destiny 2 more than Destiny 1, so uh, make sure you stick around because there's definitely going to be more videos. Without further ado, let's talk about the first one, Apotheosis Veil, a returning exotic from Destiny 1 that allowed you to immediately regenerate health, melee, and grenade energy upon activating your super. The symbol looks very similar to the previous one, except for the previous one was a little bit uh, more warpy kind of thing, had a little line across the bottom, and uh, the, the motto reads, most helmets protect the mind from the universe, not this one. I have no idea what this that, that means, but hopefully it's the same as the previous one. There are a couple of different perks, uh, weapons, uh, I think there's raid uh, perks that allow you to get your grenade from back from when you use your super. This one gives you all of it. it. Gives you your health, your grenade, and your melee. Definitely something that can be very useful, and it does not look like it's attached to a specific super. Coming up next, another returning Destiny 1 favorite, the Armamentarium. This is going to be a chest for the Titan that gives you an extra grenade charge, no matter what grenade you're using. Could be very useful for using pretty much any grenade in the, in the, in the game. If you want a bunch of suppressor grenades, if you want more pulse grenades, and you don't want to use that top tree for some reason. Uh, overall, in the previous game, it didn't allow you to have three grenades. There was uh, also a Warlock version where you could have double fusions, and then another uh, exotic that allowed you to have double grenades, and it did not give you three. But the fact that the Doomfang Pauldrons can get you up to three throws of the shield may imply that the fact that you can get a third grenade, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Coming up next is the Ashen Wake, a new exotic gauntlet for the Titans that's coming for the Warmind. The motto reads, it is your turn. These people will follow you to the very end. Remember that you were forged in light. This is from Adoth, the second Imperial Magistrate of the Sunbreaker. The fact that it says Sunbreaker in the Legendary mod has to do with a solar grenade probably implies it has to do something with these solar grenades. I was speculating that the fact that maybe it has to do with it, uh, your grenades leaving a fiery wake, a, a kind of maybe solar uh, light explosion, uh, maybe just the fire, the grounds on fire. The fact that it's called Ashen Wake implies that it might be like this. Uh, the picture does not, uh, the armor park picture does not help me whatsoever, I have no idea. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think this means, and uh, of course, uh, maybe something else entirely different. Let me know if I'm on, on point or I'm totally off. Coming up next is the Claws of Amkura, Warlock Exotic, returning from Destiny 1. Uh, the mind is malleable, filled with transient and fleeting ideas. Let us shape it so that you may see the infinite splendor of the universe. Uh, in the previous game, it allowed you to have an additional charge for all Warlock charge melees. It was very nice when you wanted to use things like Flame Shield in PvP. You definitely run out there and get a lot more Flame Shield because uh, you have another melee charge. You did a lot more damage with your melee. We'll have to wait and see exactly how this worked considering in this game, in Destiny 2, you cannot two-shot melee people, but maybe with another melee charge, you might be able to two-shot melee people some of the time. Or maybe this is just for getting your Flame Shield. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it works. However, the armor perk has a picture of wings and an arrow. Perhaps this has to do with the Warlock Glide, making it more effective and going faster, maybe doing longer. The legendary mod is a light wake. Uh, it's very odd to have something that has to do with movement on your gloves. Uh, perhaps it has to do with melee gives you more uh, faster glide or more glide. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it works, uh, but overall it looks very nice. It might be different. It might be the same. Coming up next is the Eternal Warrior, another returning exotic uh, Titan helmet is going to be the one where you have Unstoppable. It gave you uh, absolute unflinching resolve while you're using your uh, Striker and you're uh, basically leaping through the air to smash. 
you were more resilient to damage. This could be very useful in the Nightfall high scoring because of the fact that I cannot tell you how many times I've died while flying through the air with my Striker. Uh, maybe it'll make you more invulnerable while using Striker in totality. This will make Striker a very, very tanky build with a lot of Masterwork cores. Could be your tank-like character, take-like class. Uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly how it works. The picture is of a Fist and Arc. Perhaps this is hinting to the Fist of Havoc. Perhaps it has to do with melee, uh, with your melee charge. Again, we'll have to wait and see. Coming up next, another returning Destiny 1 from the War Wrath of the Machine. I almost called it War of the Machine. Uh, War on the Machine, uh, called the Frosties, a leg exotic for the Hunters that allowed you to have a tighter turn radius while sprinting and increased grenade and melee regeneration while sprinting. The picture is completely different, so it potentially could be pre completely different. The motto reads, I promise it'll be safer next time. Uh, it probably has to do with sprinting, maybe it has to do with getting your health back while sprinting, a, a shield, uh, but overall it's probably the same as the previous game, getting you a tighter turn radius. Overall, tighter turn radius sometimes could save your life. Um, the one for the uh, the Titans, the one that looks the rustic one, I forget what it's called, I think MK44 standicides. Ah, that was it. Uh, very similar to that one. Uh, hopefully they try something different, but most likely it's going to be the same. Coming up next is going to be a new one. This was not in Destiny 1 called the Ophidia Spathe, a hunter chess piece. Uh, its motto reads, listen carefully when the serpent speaks for our tongue is forked and her words have two meanings. That's, that sounded like something a hermit of, of infinite wisdom would say. But basically, it looks like it has to do with the hunter uh, giving another melee charge. If it's that, it's boring. And I don't, I don't like... I don't like that it's uh, coming, uh, because we had one for a double melee charge in Destiny 1, I think, and uh, uh, it's, it's a boring like idea because nobody uses throwing knives and or the solar tree for throwing knives, but I would like to present a different idea. The fact that it talks about forked tongues, or the fact that it has two knives in the picture of the armor perks, what if instead of having another throwing uh, knife charge, you threw two throwing knives in one? How cool would that be? You'd use both hands and you throw both of them at the same target. They have like this big old hitbox that, uh, that's easier to hit enemies with. In PvP, you probably could one-shot people by hitting them in the body with these two uh, two knives. How cool would that be? That's just speculation. I actually have no idea, but we'll have to wait and see if this is gonna be one of those dual throwing knife throws. Oh man, it would be cool. I would love to see some montage clips of that. Coming up next is Sanguine Alchemy, exotic chess piece for the Warlock. There is power in blood. It's most likely referring to getting more power uh, from killing enemies. Most likely maybe power weapon damage. The heavy weapons maybe do more damage when you get a kill, or maybe specifically with a kill with power weapons. Uh, I'm not too sure how it works. Maybe this could be very nice to use with the Ward Cliff. You get some kills with the Ward Cliff, you auto load uh, from that boss you killed, and then you dump it on the boss. And you just get a ton of damage. But uh, again, I actually have no idea because this is a new one uh, for Destiny 2. Definitely a new one that was not in Destiny 1. Overall, looks pretty dull. Coming up next, another Destiny 1 returning uh, exotic for the hunter called Isil de Ahamkara's Grat. It reads, beware the idle musings, oh, I almost called it musings, of being lost to time. Oh, bearer mine, madness engulfs the weary soul. That means basically nothing. I have no idea what that means. Basically, in the previous game, gave you an additional melee charge. Melee damage had a chance to automatically reload into uh, ammo into your primary weapon. The fact that it has a picture of the Void Fist, it has the, the picture of a claw there, uh, would in you know would imply the fact that it has to do with melees again. Giving you another melee charge, perhaps specifically for your uh, Void class. Giving you another smoke grenade would be actually pretty cool. Having up to three smoke grenades, you know, having two from this, and then having a third from the dodging one, you could have three smoke grenades. Maybe be very nice in PvE to get a lot of the enemies blinded for a long period of time, or many different enemies. Uh, perhaps useful in PvP to blind your enemies. Smoke grenades are definitely something that blind me a lot. However, in PvE, the Orpheus Reg is probably still going to be the dominating uh, strategy. Coming up next is our first weapon that we've been seeing in this countdown. There's only two in this countdown, uh, it's sadly, but probably there's a bunch that are hiding in the uh, the Nightfall Prestige unique rewards, or perhaps in the Raid rewards. We'll have to wait and see. But the Suros Regime, the returning favorite auto rifle, you aim down sights, you shoot slower, you do more damage. It's a 600 rounds per minute, which is similar to the No Calamity to be in rev uh, relevance. The Uriels does a 450 rounds per minute, so it shoots a little bit faster. Uh, hopefully, it's like the first version, where it shoots slower, does more damage, because the second version with the Taken King uh, made it so you have 
the wind up like a mini gun where it shoots faster the longer you hold the trigger was not a bad idea i just much preferred the slower fire rate to higher damage because you could definitely get a lot farther range use it more like a scout rifle to pulse rifle range it was very fun to use overall definitely loving it and i definitely want to put some paint on it because this is a terrible color what the hell are you thinking punchy this is a terrible color anyways let's uh let's move on to the next weapon which is the huckleberry <laughs> As I was reading the Huckleberry, I read the motto, and it says, I'm yours. That's cute. Basically, I'm your Huckleberry. It's a submachine gun from Tex Machina. Very similar, uh, or actually is the same producer as the last word from Destiny 1. So hopefully it has the same perk. The weapon perk has the bowl. Uh, in the previous game, the last word, when you were not aiming down sights, when you were blind firing, hip, firing from the hip. That's what it's called. Firing from the hip, you did more damage which led to an unfortunate glitch where as people were aiming down sights, they did that extra amount of damage, so in that time of your aiming down sights, made the weapon a two-shot headshot, and it was it was a ridiculous weapon. But hopefully, in this game, it's similar in the fact that you're aiming, if when you're blind firing, hip, firing in the hip, firing from the hip, you do more damage. Uh, and of course, that fourth column looks like high caliber, right? I'm uh, maybe mistaking it. And it's 758 rounds per minute, means it's in the middle section for the fire rates on the submachine guns. So we'll have to wait and see exactly how it works. It looks very nice, and I definitely want to get my hands on it. Coming up next is going to be the Oculus Zoll, a new one. I've never seen this one before. A warlock helmet exotic. The Hive do not see how we see. They look beyond, into the infinite, into the dark. Eris Morn. I have no idea what this does. Uh, I could extrapolate maybe it's similar to the Foe Tracer, where it shows like a hit marker around the walls uh, once you damage enemies, uh, similar to the way the Eye of Worlds does it. Hopefully not, because we literally have another warlock exotic that does something similar. I have no idea. Maybe something entirely different. Maybe something really freaking cool. Maybe uh, in darkness, it's maybe it's like a night vision. So in darkness, you can see better, but <laughs> I've got no idea. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Coming up next, one of my favorite looking ones, Worm God Caress, the Titan Exotic Gauntlets. Have you ever stared into the green sulfire flames? There is terror, but also something warm from Eris Morn. There are two of them that are they're labeled uh, from Eris Morn, so hopefully we see Eris Morn return uh, in the game. It seems like I have no idea what this does, actually. I, uh... I zero ideas. G uh, melee from the void, maybe it has to do with the melee causing enemies to be blinded, uh, maybe enemies to be weakened, I have no idea. The last thing I wanted to mention with this, if you turn your head sideways, that armor perk looks like a 69. All right, Eris more, let's go. Favorite position. <laughs> or similar to Cancer Capricorn, I forget what the symbol is, but it looks like a 69 sideways. I always, I always made that joke because I'm, I'm a child. And lastly, the final exotic in the list called the Wormhusk Crown, the uh, Hunter Exotic Helmet. Uh, we strive to know the infinite, sharpen our minds on the whetstone of the impossible. The only idea I have here from the armor perk with the skull there has to do with headshots, perhaps. Maybe getting critical damage uh, will increase your next critical damage. Maybe getting a critical headshot will make the next body shot do more damage, or maybe even critical shot damage. Wait, that's a great idea. Let's say you get a headshot, and the next shot that hits a body does critical headshot damage. That would be cool. And uh, maybe if you get another headshot, it keeps stacking the headshot damage. That would be cool. That would be a boss destroyer for sure. Although it sounds like it could be ridiculously overpowered on bosses with a really large crit. But anyways... Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all the exotics that were released to us uh, today. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know in the comments down below about the ones. If you have any ideas of what they do, maybe some of the YouTubers that went to the summit were able to figure out what they do. Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to, le to learn about it. And of course, I'll leave a comment down below that'll be pinned. That'll say edit. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about which exotics that I've found more information about uh, from the comments and from the internet. Anyways, that's the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below so other people can see this video and subscribe for more Destiny 2 in the future. I am hyped. We have like two weeks till it drops. I'm so hyped. Let's go, Destiny 2. Man, I'm a, I'm a more of a Destiny veteran and I have been waiting so long for some DLC because Curse of the, the Trials was, was a flub. Anyways, that's the video for yesterday. Hope you guys enjoyed. My name's The Necronic and I'll see you guys on the next one.